Welcome to the Voice of Apache. I'm Rich Bowen. In this interview, I speak with Piotr and Matt about some of the recent advances and modernizations in the Log4j project, which is part of logging.apache.org, the Apache Logging Services project. If you are a Log4j user, you'll want to listen carefully. There's a lot of technical information here on how to take advantage of some of these new features. Uh, hi, I'm Piotr. I am PMC at uh, Logging Services, uh, Apache Logging Services. Uh, I mostly work on Log4j. Uh, uh, hey, I'm uh, Matt Sicker. I'm also on the PMC for Log4j. I've been for, several, oh, for logging services, primarily on Log4j and related things there uh, for several years. Uh, so mostly what we, we are doing now is uh, we are going, uh, working on security. So we deploy the automatic build. So uh, I could build uh, a release uh, from, from, from my phone. Uh, <laughs> while we are talking, uh, then we concentrated on uh, S-Bombs and uh, we are still participating on, there is a transparency API uh, project at Cyclone X, uh, which uh, should facilitate the communication of, of projects. So we have dependencies, we want to know when they have problems and uh, Many projects depend on Log4j, and we want to communicate to them uh, when we have problems. Uh, yeah, possibly never, <laughs> but we cannot exclude that. Uh, so that's another thing that's, that we worked uh, in December. We are trying to modularize. So one, uh, one of the ways uh, we can make more secure software. It's so this is something actually uh, I had tried to encourage quite a long time ago, but this was back um, before the majority of software developers are using dependency management in their build tools. I know, it seems strange to hear that, but people also didn't used to use version control. <laughs> so one of the, one of the old um, issues we had was trying to make it simple to distribute the software and use it. So one of the things we did about that was in, in the Log4j core, we would include all the optional features and you would bring the additional dependencies if necessary if you actually wanted to use it. Uh, th things like that, while it was useful to get started, was part of the cause behind some of our security issues in the past because optional features could get activated uh, in, in common scenarios like in <laughs> application servers and such. So one of the things we wanted to do is, while we were updating Log4j to more properly support Java modules in Java 9 and beyond, was breaking down the core into actual modular parts. This way, not only would adding the uh, adding a dependency on these modules would bring in the otherwise optional dependencies. You wouldn't have these optional dependencies unless you opted in to have them. So not only can you get a smaller application, you have a much smaller surface area to deal with. And you know, for example, it's, for a lot of people, it's unlikely that your logging system needs network access. You can but most people don't. So why would you have that ability even included if you don't need it? So that has kind of um, led down the path of breaking things down into components and making it easier to actually um, use these things individually. Yeah, so nowadays version three, which we are working on, uh, every dependency is in its own module. So you strictly, if you want this feature, this feature, this feature, you, you choose the features. The modules are very, very little. They have some have four or five classes, which obviously needs uh, dependency management. Otherwise, <laughs> you need to download uh, 75 uh, different uh, libraries. Uh, but it's it's great. Um, I think it greatly increases security. Besides, if, if a problem occurs in one dependency, it doesn't propagate to to your application unless you have that module. Now let's say you're thinking, okay, cool. Remember log for shell that had something to do with Jindy, I remember, right? Well, what if Jindy's still on my server and somebody accidentally included this dependency? Well, we have further defense in depth now where there are like various conditional properties that you have to explicitly set that will enable it. Otherwise, these, this code will just 
um, you know, error at runtime and not actually be usable. So that way, if um, an exploit chain tried to actually use that code, it would find itself unable to use it because the code disabled itself anyway. The next, the next uh, direction we are, we are working on, we are currently working, is uh, uh, improve the documentation. So we could have the most secure software in the world, but if people don't know how to use it securely, it doesn't matter. I'll give you one example. This is something that occasionally gets reported to us as a security vulnerability, but that's because of a lack of understanding of how to use things. One of the c common ways of uh, configuring logging, especially historically, was using something we call the pattern layout, where you essentially are using kind of like a printf style statement where you're specifying the various fields that you want to include in the log message. However, sometimes these fields might come from user controllable data. Like for example, if you're outputting the uh, exception message that was thrown somewhere, oftentimes that might include the user input that caused the exception. Well, if that user input has things like, I don't know, new line characters or other things, maybe a new line followed by a fake timestamp followed by other things that you would expect in the log, now all of a sudden it looks like that was a legitimate log message. However, the way I've always looked at pattern layout stuff was this is useful for development to yourself, typically. Once you put it in production, you're using a more structured layout. Currently, I like to always recommend a JSON template layout, but in the past, before we had that as a first party component, I had used some of the other components for this. But the idea being that if you have a system that's parsing these logs, like, I don't know, any sort of ingestion mechanism, you need to use an actual structured layout. It's, this is just how computer science works. Like, you can't just, as LLMs are finding out all over again, you can't just expect freeform text to be safe and parsable all the time. Yeah, also, if you use pattern layout uh, with uh, JSON -y <laughs> Things will structure, get structure, it doesn't mean it will be valid JSON. Uh, pattern layout doesn't escape uh, uh, text as, as it should. And uh, yeah, like if you. There are things that try to allow you to escape, but the thing about pattern layout is it's just arbitrary text output. Mm -hmm. We don't know what file format or encoding you're using. So there's nothing we can do generically. Like if you, if you try to escape something for XML, but it's going into a JSON file, that's not very helpful. Well, these these are the directions we are we are following to secure Log4j, but uh, also also we are expanding. Uh, so uh, one of the things that we were discussing the, this last uh, three months it was uh, improve context propagation. So. Uh, uh, when you log messages, there are, is, there are always context data. And, uh, well, the threat, the MDC API and uh, the threat context API in, in Log4j2, they were conceived 20 years ago. So they were not very easy to use. At the time, uh, thinking about multi-threading, uh, uh, Something like Reactor didn't exist, so you didn't expect one execution to to follow uh, jump thread uh, several times. Uh, so that's something uh, we have been exploring. Uh, we actually had a meeting uh, yesterday, and uh, we think we have uh, some idea uh, uh, on how to how to do context propagation uh, properly. Uh, if some of the people that that are listening. Uh, have their own ideas, please, uh, please uh, join us on the mailing list. Uh, another thing that we were thinking about, it was uh, integrated with telemetry. Yes, yeah, so we wanted to be, basically in the past, uh, we've exposed a few metrics through JMX, but as we all know, this is also another insecure mess from the old, um, the old bits of Java. So there are more modern ways of doing that but there's also a million different observability and, and metrics frameworks now. We don't really want to reinvent an entire metrics library because that's a different uh, domain entirely. However, we would like to make it so that you can easily plug in your favorite metrics library and start gathering metrics from Log4j. Because um, until now, basically people would try to add custom metrics to various components that matter to them. Like for example, things having to do with the um, the state of a, of a message queue of when log messages are being processed and things like that. And instead of trying to make one-off things for all of that, we'd like to actually make it so that you can kind of 
wrap a component and instrument it at, at will. We, we should add that uh, historically uh, the way to do metrics and tracing was logging. So logging was the, one of the first things uh, that came out. So many people printed uh, metrics into logging or just uh, logged to messages and uh, to see uh, how long does it take from, from one, one message to the other. Uh, so uh, while we accept this way of, of doing metrics, uh, we are open to, to introduce uh, changes that are needed uh, to, to, to delegate to our libraries. And also when you think about the metrics that a logging library might have, if it was logging out those metrics, does it have to log the metrics of the logging the metrics, first of all? And then how much redundancy is going on when you're doing that? I mean, part of the point of metrics was realizing that if you're parsing a log message and only taking out a little bit of data from it, why can't you just log that data directly in a way that's structured and parsable? So by exporting this stuff, it'll make it so that you can actually gather this data and know that maybe your system is logging too much and know that besides having to look at heat maps and heat dumps and checking like, well, why is it why is uh, the application spending all this time in some synchronized write method? It's like, well, it's because you're writing way too many logs, but maybe you can, get, you can gather uh, more useful information about this through more detailed metrics. Yeah. Uh, one last subject, uh, you probably noticed, that those that follow that uh, Log4j3 lost uh, a lot of appenders, uh, a lot of, uh, of features. Uh, those features were dropped because no one from the PMC or the committers uh, work on those, uh, on like uh, Cassandra, if you work on Cassandra, uh, Kafka, uh, we don't have experience with that. So instead of uh, releasing a low grade uh, product, uh, we decided to drop them. Uh, well, it doesn't mean they need to stay that way. So if somebody uh, knows about those technologies and wants to contribute them and wants to help us maintain them, uh, we, need, we need to maintain them for, for a long time. So we would like to find somebody that, that can help us over not just one commit, but uh, a couple of years. Uh, uh, please contact us on the dev mailing list. Uh, We'll note that Log4j 3.0 has um, a couple beta releases out, so you can try this out and get some feedback, especially if you found some breaking things. There are some things, if you've made custom extensions to Log4j, you'll have to update, particularly uh, custom plugins may need to be recompiled, or actually, you can still run against the old plugin, but if you recompile it, you're gonna have to make some updates. Through some magic of annotations, continuing to work Oh, basically due to some various technical details I won't get into, but basically you need to update that, especially if you have a custom layout, because one of the fun security enhancements we introduced a little while ago was removing serialization from everything. The Java serialization API is known is a known minefield of remote code ex execution exploits. So instead of having any possible way of exploiting that, we just removed all well, as many uh, instances from the API as we could. In particular, layout plugins referenced serializable originally, and now that's no longer part of the API, we expect layouts to either write out strings or byte arrays, but not serializable objects. So if you want to still serialize things, just make your own layout that serializes it into bytes. Simple, right? I wouldn't recommend it, but you can still do it. We, we didn't release beta free of fee zero, but one of the decisions we took uh, in January is uh, Log4j is split into an API that uh, developers use and the backend. So the backend is called Log4j Core. Uh, Log4j API will not have a free dot x a free zero release uh, because a free zero release of an API means just breaking changes. Mm -hmm. So we are not introducing breaking changes. If you are using a 4 j API uh, for logging, don't worry. 2.24 will be the last. The two series will continue living while the backend will migrate uh, to log 4 j core free. So 
FreeZero will only have the backend release because we want to stress out that the API is stable and doesn't, doesn't break your code. Yeah, and this is also helps to try to highlight, even more importantly, to a common misconception we find that people will be like, oh, I'm going to use Log4j, but I have to use some other logging API because Log4j is a backend, right? Oh, no. It has both. We've had this stable API for a long time that we have made careful changes to. In fact, throughout time, there was only one small backward binary compatibility problem that was discovered um, and documented for quite a while now. And if, if, if you haven't heard of this before, then it, you probably weren't affected by it and won't ever be affected by it because we also have um, better build tooling that does API and ABI compatibility checks that will validate that the changes that may be introduced in the future are valid to do in, in, in a non-breaking way. Yeah, and if you want to uh, migrate from, if you are using, you are probably using SLF4J, if you want to migrate to Log4J API, the migration is very, very simple because Log4J API is basically an extension of SLF4J. Uh, you can go to the Open Rewrite uh, project, uh, they have a recipe for that. You can do it automatically uh, in five minutes. We also have some uh, newer tooling that will help rewrite is it the bytecode or the source code? Uh, the bytecode. So if you have existing applications and you're trying to remove the overhead of, of these 300 other logging APIs you might have included through all of your dependencies, you can rewrite the bytecode so that they're all calling the log4j API directly, minimizing the overhead, and potentially taking advantage of the nice features like our unrolled uh, arguments. So uh, one small little uh, performance thing that might show up when you're calling logs a lot is that Java var, var args type methods tend to allocate a temporary array in order to pass the variable arguments. However, um, that binary compatibility issue I mentioned before was back when we had introduced unrolled versions of this that would allow you to um, avoid that temporary allocation as long as you weren't trying to log more than 10 or so things at the same time, which is probably way more than most people actually use in practice. So you can take advantage of a lot of um, just a lot of these little details add up over time. Yeah, and the tool that rewrites uh, bytecode is in Log4j Transform. You can Google it. Uh, it has another feature which is uh, usually don't log uh, the location of, of your log statement because it's expensive. It's, uh, it's a couple of microseconds uh, to, to find the location on Java. Uh, this tool can uh, compute it at compile time, so it's free. Uh, Which can be very handy for debugging, especially for poorly written code that where the logger name still doesn't give you much of a clue as to where it's coming from because maybe that logger is used inside a gigantic thousand plus line class. So if one of the reasons for using logging oftentimes is trying to debug these monstrosities, so anything we can do to make that easier, uh, we're doing it. Yeah. So I think that's, that's all the updates we've had. Yeah. Uh, if you have any questions, you can go on the Logging Apache Org uh, website. Uh, we have already restructured the support uh, part. Uh, uh, we have uh, GitHub discussions opened. Uh, that's, that's probably the easiest way, the most modern way yeah. to contact us. Uh, and also keep a lookout for Community Over Code Con in Denver this year, where I'll be presenting on Log4j3 and all the various things that we're doing to modernize everything and kind of going a little more detail about what we've been talking about. Yeah. So, thank you. Thanks.